Hello YouTube, this is uh, Captain Nav, I hope you are all doing well. Welcome to this uh, cold and dark uh, Boeing 777-300ER. Uh, today uh, we're going to have a look at uh, first uh, the flight deck, have a little tour of the flight deck and then uh, how uh, we uh, power up the aircraft using the uh, uh, power up uh, supplementary uh, procedure. And uh, then we go through uh, the setup up to the point where we uh, can start uh, calculating uh, the uh, performance and uh, get uh, going. So first of all, uh, we'll have a look at uh, the fly deck and the uh, from the captain's seat here. Uh, going down, you can see uh, the tiller, uh, the chart holder, the uh, oxygen mask there. Uh, that's the uh, what I would call the lunch box. Um, Normally, uh, this area there, that's where the EFB is, but uh, in the simulation, it's uh, just the, the box. Uh, once again, you can see the cup holder, the handle for the window. And uh, looking uh, towards the back, uh, we can see uh, just behind the seat there, a space for some manuals. A little uh, space as well uh, here for uh, storage, or sometimes for... Um, computers and things like that, uh, safety equipment and uh, a cabinet to uh, hang the jackets and stuff, all the spare bombs where we can put uh, high-vis jackets, smoke hoods and that uh, compartment. The door itself and uh, the first uh, jump seat, the central jump seat there and uh, the little uh, cabinet as well in the middle with the uh, oxygen mask, cup holders and uh, the cabinet at the bottom with uh, the little plastic door as well for some uh, manuals and documents which uh, which is all good and then uh, coming on the right hand side uh, we have uh, same thing again the lunch box where the EFB is supposed to be uh, the teller as well on the first officer side uh, chart holder uh, some uh, uh, well, a space for uh, manuals, uh, the handle for the window again, uh, these uh, two uh, cabinets there, one for some manuals and other for the sun visors, uh, the uh, engineering uh, station where the engineer will see uh, all the uh, problems on the aircraft, it's all uh, electronically uh, centralized and the second jump seat uh, once again with the oxygen mask uh, on the right hand side there and a couple of cabinets with uh, manuals and other bits and pieces and uh, finally the uh, hat holders at the top there where you can put your hats if you have hats and uh, yeah space for the headsets so that's pretty much it for the flight deck tour you can see uh, PMDG have done uh, quite a good job and now uh, we'll see uh, how we can uh, power up the aircraft. Uh, usually the aircraft is already uh, powered up. You don't uh, get to the flight deck to uh, this uh, cold and dark state. But uh, for the purpose of the video, uh, we'll uh, run through the uh, electrical power up uh, supplementary procedure. So uh, the first step in uh, powering up uh, the aircraft is to uh, switch the uh, battery switch to on. So we go to... Uh, the electrical panel battery switch on and uh, then uh, the C1 and C2 uh, primary pump switches the hydraulic panel uh, off Make sure they are off which is the case then the demand pump selectors uh, they are all off as you can see uh, the wipers they are off the left and the right which is good uh, then the landing gear lever is uh, down, which is the case already, and uh, the alternate flap selector is uh, off, which is also the kind of uh, default position. Then moving back up to the electrical panel, uh, the uh, bus die switches are auto, that's uh, also the default position. And uh, then uh, we do not have uh, ground power, so there's no... Uh, uh, ground power light uh, eliminated there. APU generator switch on and then we start uh, the APU. So um, you can see uh, at this stage we only have uh, three uh, lights. Uh, the two uh, lights at the generator control switch is there. I show off. Uh, the generators are not uh, obviously uh, on 
and the brakes was uh, light uh, down uh, in front of the captain's seat there. So we can see we've got the uh, APU inlet door open. So the uh, APU is uh, starting uh, slowly. It takes about a minute for the uh, APU uh, to come online. And uh, once the APU is started, then it'll be able to provide the electrical power to the aircraft. However, the uh, aircraft will uh, take a little bit of time to uh, uh, get uh, all powered up. So the sequence is a little bit uh, is a little bit slow. That's why I guess we don't um, come up to a cold and dark uh, flight deck. The uh, engineers and uh, ground personnel uh, keep the uh, aircraft uh, powered up at all times, more or less. So let's assume uh, the uh, minute has now passed, and uh, as you can uh, start hearing, the uh, APU is now providing uh, electricity. So the clocks are coming on, uh, then the uh, MCP uh, panel uh, is uh, coming alive as well. We've got the speed and heading altitude windows uh, lit, and the standby ADI uh, in the middle there uh, is also uh, online. And you can see on the uh, overhead panel, uh, all the lights are on as well now. So it's uh, fairly uh, good. Uh, the uh, FMCs are starting to uh, uh, to be lit as well. We get the uh, menu pages on the uh, FMC uh, showing up now slowly. And uh, as I said, yeah, it takes a little bit of time for all the systems to uh, be uh, energized and uh, coming to life. It's now going to take a little bit more time for the uh, aircraft to uh, to come to life. It's a little bit like a computer. Uh, when you switch it on, it doesn't uh, come to life straight away. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to uh, initialize, so it's a little bit the same. At the end of the day, this is about a flying computer. Uh, so uh, it's uh, obviously going to take a little bit of time to uh, uh, get all the systems uh, up and running. So we're going to need to be a little bit uh, patient uh, as the aircraft uh, is uh, coming to life. Uh, it's uh, pretty much uh, real time. I didn't uh, edit the video, so uh, uh, just uh, uh, keep an eye on uh, how things are happening. Uh, one of the first uh, thing uh, to uh, take place next, as you can see now, is the uh, standby ADI is uh, fully aligned and uh, ready to go. And then uh, the six uh, display uh, units will uh, also uh, come to life along with the uh, FMCs. Just now, uh, just a little uh, few uh, seconds away from uh, happening, the aircraft uh, systems are all initializing and uh, coming to uh, uh, coming to life. We can see now the clocks are showing the correct time. Uh, the uh, FMCs are all uh, on and the uh, display units are now starting to flash and uh, display uh, correct uh, data so uh, that's uh, pretty much it uh, the uh, aircraft has uh, now uh, come to life then uh, we'll uh, get uh, this uh, overall warning uh, system which basically uh, tests the uh, speakers and all the warning uh, systems uh, in the flight deck And uh, we now need a little bit more time for all the systems to uh, self-test, all the warning uh, uh, systems to um, uh, do a quick uh, self-test uh, uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, up and running and working properly. We'll now uh, check our uh, ICAS uh, messages. Uh, you can see uh, all the messages uh, displayed are expected at this stage of uh, the setup, so that's uh, all good. And uh, there's a second page, here we are. And uh, we'll also uh, check uh, the status page to see uh, what messages we have. Uh, we have only a TCAS message, which is expected as well as the TCAS is uh, switched off. So we can uh, now move on to the preliminary uh, pre flight procedure which uh, basically uh, tells us to uh, switch the uh, Adiru switch on. Emergency light switch is in the arm position with the guard closed. And uh, then we'll move to the status uh, display and basically uh, verify the uh, hydraulic quantities, uh, the APU uh, data and the uh, oxygen uh, requirements as well. So after that, uh, once uh, we're all done, 
We can uh, reset the data link system, which uh, fortunately doesn't work in the uh, simulation here. But you will go to uh, Manager and do a uh, reset. The other uh, functions uh, displayed here are not uh, working, like ATC, for Information Company. All these are not working, but obviously are working on the real aircraft. There's still a few things to do, like uh, checking the documents and the maintenance status of the aircraft, and uh, check all the safety equipment. We will uh, now move on to the pre-flight uh, procedure, which is uh, normally done by the first officer. And uh, basically, uh, we'll start at the top of the uh, overhead uh, panel and uh, check that the uh, Adiru uh, switch is on. It should be on. It was on with the preliminary uh, pre-flight procedure. There's no light. Then uh, we can move down to the primary uh, flight computer's uh, uh, disconnect switch. Make sure it's guarded and there's no lights. And uh, then the thrust asymmetry compensation switch is uh, auto. Moving down to the uh, electrical uh, panel, the uh, battery uh, switch is on and the uh, IFE passenger seats and the cabin utility uh, power switches are on. The uh, APU generator switch is on and the APU is on as well, it was started uh, to power up the aircraft. Then the left uh, bus tie and right bus tie switches are auto. As uh, previously mentioned, we do not have uh, ground power, so these uh, two uh, switches remain uh, off. If we had ground power, uh, available would uh, be uh, lit in green. Then the left uh, generator uh, control switch and the right generator control switch are on, but with the off light, the engines are not running. And it's the same for the backup generators, the left and the right should be uh, on but uh, the off light should be eliminated and then the drive uh, switches uh, should be guarded with the drive light uh, on as well and the camera light uh, during the day is uh, normally off uh, would be on at night I guess and the left wiper is uh, off the ground uh, proximity runway override switch is off and then the uh, emergency uh, light uh, switch is uh, armed and the guard is closed. Service interphone should be uh, off. Passenger oxygen uh, switch is uh, off and guarded. Uh, we don't want the oxygen mass to be uh, deployed uh, by accident. Window heat, all the switches are on. Uh, they are never really uh, turned off even when we uh, shut down the aircraft. And then uh, moving on to the uh, hydraulic panel, which is quite a big uh, panel. Uh, the ram air turbine switch is off and uh, guarded. The primary uh, engine pump switches are uh, on uh, by showing the fault light. And the uh, electric uh, pumps uh, switches are off, showing uh, the fault light as well. And then uh, with the demand uh, pump selectors, they are all off and uh, showing the fault light as well. So we don't uh, pressurize the hydraulic system uh, as yet. Then uh, passenger sign uh, comes on uh, once we are done with the fueling, which we'll assume it's the case. And then uh, we can adjust uh, all the uh, light switches there to uh, our convenience. Then uh, the landing uh, lights, uh, they are all uh, off at this stage. And the uh, left uh, nose and right. Moving up to the cargo fire and APU fire panel, uh, all the switches are off, all the guards closed. And uh, then uh, the uh, engine uh, EC uh, uh, mode uh, switches are normal. And uh, the uh, start selectors are normal as well, both the left and the right. And the uh, auto start uh, switches uh, on. Next is the uh, fuel uh, jettison panel. Uh, first, we'll make sure that the left and right uh, nozzle switches are guarded and off. Uh, the fuel uh, to remain selector is in, and the uh, fuel jettison arm switch is off. Then, for the fuel panel, uh, all the switches are off. The six uh, pump switches are off, as well as the crossfeed uh, switches, and uh, fault light is illuminated uh, in the uh, uh, main uh, pump switches except the left uh, forward pump 
because it provides uh, fuel to the uh, APU. So uh, to sum up, uh, all the switches uh, should be off at this stage. For the anti-ice uh, panel, uh, all the three uh, switches should be in the uh, auto position. And uh, the uh, exterior lights, uh, the navigation uh, lights uh, should be on. And uh, possibly uh, the uh, logo switch as well uh, can come on at night. For the uh, light uh, brightness, you can adjust it. Uh, for example, uh, at uh, night time, you can uh, switch it to a uh, dim. And then the runway turn off, uh, taxi light and strobe uh, light uh, switches are all uh, off, of course, on the ground. The uh, air conditioning uh, panel, the uh, equipment cooling override is auto and the gas bar is uh, on. The research fans are both on. And um, the uh, air con reset we don't really touch. Uh, the uh, temperature selectors we kind of put in the middle uh, position. The pack uh, switches can come on and the light comes off as uh, the APU is providing a uh, bleed air to the packs. And uh, the trim air switches are both uh, on. Then moving on to the bleed air panel, uh, the left center and right isolation valve switches uh, should be uh, the uh, auto position. And uh, the left and the right uh, engine bleed air switches are on by showing off as the engines are off. And the APU uh, bleed air switch is in the uh, auto position and it's currently uh, providing uh, bleed air to the packs. Then the pressurization panel, uh, the uh, switches should be, uh, both switches there should be in the auto position and uh, all the switch uh, neutral and uh, in. And finally, the right uh, wiper should be uh, off. Once you've done the flow a few times, it's much faster to do the overhead uh, panel setup. We'll continue the pre-flight uh, procedure and move down to the MCP. The flight director uh, switch on. The lower center display switch push. And uh, then uh, move to the FS uh, control panel. We can switch on the VR uh, switches and uh, uh, minimums. We can uh, maybe set the uh, minimums for an ILS uh, approach if we need to return to the airport. FPV and meters are at convenience. We can uh, set the QNH. In this case, it's uh, 29902. And uh, we'll uh, use the map mode usually and uh, with a range of uh, 10 miles so that we've got a good uh, uh, close up look. Then we make sure the weather radar switch is off and the radar is not displayed and uh, all the map switches are as needed, usually only uh, the airport is uh, displayed. And uh, finally uh, we'll uh, press the uh, traffic uh, switch and uh, make sure we've got the uh, TCAS uh, enabled and TCAS fail uh, displayed on the uh, navigation display and the TCAS scale as well. Then uh, we'll move on to the side, uh, test uh, the oxygen. Uh, make sure it's working uh, properly and uh, then adjust uh, the heaters there, the foot and uh, shoulder heaters at convenience. Check the uh, instrument source select panel, all the switches are off. Then uh, have a look at the clock, uh, make sure the time and date selector is in UTC and then the inboard display selector MFD and the uh, FMC selector to auto. And then we would move on to the uh, FMC itself and start uh, setting up the uh, FMC. So for uh, the FMC uh, setup I invite you to uh, have a look at the uh, FMC uh, tutorial video uh, on the channel. Then we'll move on to the captain's area of uh, responsibility and uh, start with the uh, FS uh, control panel. Uh, set it up at uh, convenience and uh, just to uh, make sure we have the QNH set and uh, the rest of the panel at convenience, pretty much like the first officer uh, uh, panel uh, settings, uh, map mode, uh, range of about 10 miles, and uh, making sure once again the weather radar is uh, not displayed, and uh, map switches uh, usually only uh, airport. And uh, then uh, last thing, enabling the uh, TCAS uh, display on the navigation display. Moving on to the MCP, flight director switch comes on, uh, the auto throttle arm switch uh, is uh, on, 
uh, for both of them actually and uh, then we leave the speed as is usually until we enter the performance uh, we can enter the runway uh, heading for departure and uh, if we know the initial altitude then we can already uh, set it up and uh, then just uh, make sure that uh, the rest of the MCP is good uh, the flight director on the right hand side is the uh, responsibility of the first uh, officer then coming uh, to the left side uh, checking the uh, oxygen it's all good um, all uh, the heaters uh, switches at convenience same thing and all the brightness switches as well at convenience the uh, source select panel as well off same thing as the first officer side the clock same thing as well and um, then the um, uh, FMA showing toga toga we got flight director displayed and um, on uh, the uh, ND as well we've got all the uh, correct uh, enunciation the uh, inboard selector is MFD and the uh, heading reference is to uh, magnetic uh, we'll check the uh, standby ADI is uh, set with uh, QNH and uh, proper display we uh, set the parking brake check that the speed brakes is uh, down and uh, the trim is in the correct position the uh, stop trim uh, collapse switches are uh, guards are closed and the uh, thrust levers are closed uh, thrust reversers are um, down the um, fuel control switches are cut off and the uh, alternate flap selector is uh, off and the guard is closed as well and the flaps are up and uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the captain's part and then uh, the stage as I said we can uh, start uh, briefing and uh, moving on with the setup then the first officer would uh, once again check on his side uh, that uh, on the PFD we've got Toga and Toga enunciated on the FMA flight director is also enunciated look at the uh, navigation display that uh, everything looks uh, normal there we have in particular uh, TCAST fail enunciated uh, the uh, GPWS uh, switches they are all off and guarded the landing gear lever is down alternate gear is uh, guarded auto brake comes to uh, RTO and it's displayed on uh, ICAS then uh, we would uh, have a look at the um, upper uh, display there and the uh, engine uh, indications and check that uh, no uh, limits for example have been uh, exceeded previously then check the recall uh, we have uh, six expected messages which are as, uh, displayed here so that's uh, all expected so we can cancel the ICAS look at the status uh, display and uh, check the uh, hydraulics the APU and the oxygen once again and uh, also uh, making sure that we don't have any uh, status uh, messages which would uh, imply there's a problem uh, with uh, the aircraft then uh, we reset uh, the checklist so press uh, uh, reset and then uh, reset all and so uh, next time we open the checklist they should uh, display the pre-flight uh, checklist which was the case already but just uh, we can do it another time to make sure it's uh, it's ready and then back to our uh, status uh, display moving down to the uh, radio panel uh, we can set uh, VHF uh, 1 uh, to the first uh, frequency we're gonna speak to and uh, then uh, this area is for the captain so the first officer we don't really uh, touch that then set the weather radar panel at uh, convenience uh, usually it's uh, auto then the third uh, VHF radio is normally on data and this is the uh, observer uh, control uh, panel the engine uh, fire warning switches are in and uh, there are no lights the center FMC usually in the aircraft is on uh, cabin interphone but uh, in the simulation uh, what I sometimes do is uh, use it uh, to uh, use the uh, FS actions and have access to the menu there so it's up to you the way you want to uh, use it but in real it's in the cabin interphone rudder trim is uh, zero all the aileron and the rudder trim switches are uh, in the neutral position 
and uh, just a little uh, tip there for example if uh, the rudder trim shows a bit of uh, rudder uh, if you press on the uh, manual uh, trim console switch then it will come back to uh, neutral to uh, the zero position then the VHF uh, right uh, radio panel and uh, also I uh, set up the uh, first officer uh, audio control panel at uh, convenience uh, to listen to uh, the frequencies we want to listen to uh, maybe uh, set it up on the speaker initially on the ground and uh, the rest is uh, yeah, pretty much at convenience and then the TCAS uh, panel so uh, we've got uh, the uh, left uh, transponder and it's uh, on the normal then the code should uh, normally be on the ground at 2000 and the TCAS is off on the ground uh, then the uh, evac uh, panel, the command is guarded, all the switches are off, the light, uh, the evac light is off and uh, that's uh, pretty much it there, we don't really touch that too much on the ground and uh, that's about it, so um, I hope you found the video uh, useful and uh, somehow informative and it will help you uh, set up the PMDG777 uh, if you like the video please uh, give me a thumbs up, if you want to see more similar content please uh, subscribe and I uh, shall uh, see you soon.